Hey y'all, my name is Mara. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving y'all some book recommendations for very specific requests. So on my Instagram, which is at mara.reads, if you're not following me there and you want to participate in activities such as this in the future, go check it out. It's linked in my description. But on my Instagram, I asked, what are some tropes, some genres, some book recommendations that you are looking for? And I have a whole list of them to go through today. I'm excited to share with y'all. Basically, I'm just going to be going through each request and then I am going to give you a brief synopsis of the book or a tagline to kind of entice you to read it and why I think that it fits that request. Before we get started, I just want to say if you haven't subscribed to my channel down below, I would really appreciate it if you consider doing so. I'm constantly uploading book recommendations such as this one and a lot of really fun themed reading vlogs that you will not want to miss. So the first request that I want to talk about is books to get you out of a reading slump. And whenever I'm in a reading slump, I'm kind of currently in one. I find it best to pick up a thriller because I feel like thrillers are enticing. You're going to want to keep turning the pages to know what happens. There's all these clues laid out and you're like, okay, how does this connect to this? And it just makes me want to keep reading. So I have two books to recommend to you for this to hopefully get you out of your reading slump. The first is going to be The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. And the second Second is another Riley Sager, Home Before Dark. So I'm going to kind of talk about these collectively. I love Riley Sager. Something about his books are just so engaging because the writing is just so easy to read and there's always so many plot twists that I don't see coming like one after another. I read Home Before Dark in two sittings and I read The Last Time I Lied in one sitting at 1 a.m. So I was clearly very invested in these stories to be able to just breeze through them like that because they had so many fun plot twists. So Home Before Dark is about a woman who lived in a house when she was younger and then she had to leave this house because it was haunted and her father wrote a book about it. Now years later her father is dead and she's back at this house to see was it actually haunted or was her father's book fictionalized. And then The Last Time I Lied has summer camp vibes. It's about a bunch of girls that go missing at a summer camp many years ago and then the woman who was in the cabin with these girls that went missing comes back to the summer camp. So these two books are very very similar so I think that if you like one you'll definitely like the the other but both of them were so much fun to read constantly kept me guessing and are sure to get you out of a reading slump the second request that i got was for a young adult or new adult romances with chronic illness representation and so i don't typically read straight romance but one book that came to mind when i saw this request was a curse so dark and lonely now this book is a ya fantasy so know that it is definitely more fantasy based than romance based but it is a beauty and the beast retelling so it definitely has that romance element to it and the main character Harper has cerebral palsy and I've heard great things about the representation in this book. I have read it. I didn't love it but I definitely did enjoy my time reading it and I think that if you're looking to diversify your TPR this is definitely a great place to go. The next request that I got was for time travel or parallel universes. So I have three different books to recommend for this. I have to mention Blake Crouch. Blake Crouch has written Dark Matter and Recursion which I both want to recommend for this specific trope. I think that if you like one of his books you're definitely going to like another one and his books definitely are mind bending. They make you think about time travel and parallel universes and you kind of just question your whole existence when you're reading a Blake Crouch book which is why I love it so much. And the last book that I want to recommend for you is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is an adult holiday themed romance and it follows a young woman who is at home for Christmas and basically she relives the same day over and over again after she gets into a car accident. So this definitely has the time travel element sort of because it has a Groundhog Day situation. So all of these books were really fun. My least favorite of the three was definitely in Holidays, but I think that it's meant for a certain type of reader. For instance, someone who likes the friends to lovers trope couldn't be me, but I think that there's definitely an audience for that book. Oh, I also want to recommend A Darker Shade of Magic. It is about a universe where there's different London. So there is definitely the element of parallel universes. And if you haven't read it, I think that it is a newer fantasy classic that is a lot of fun. I think that it has really great characters and it's just really interesting getting to explore the different Londons. The next recommendation that I got was for easy to read literary fiction and so I have two recommendations for you. The first is going to be The Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I think that this one is just so easy to get into because it's really short and I feel like the concept is really interesting. So this is about a woman who commits suicide and when she dies she enters the world of the Midnight Library where she is able to experience 
different lives that she never actually got to live out. So it deals with the concept of regret and should you be living life to your fullest? What is living life to your fullest? And I think that this one had a lot of really powerful messages. This one made me cry. I loved it so, so much. The second book that I want to recommend for you is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And I actually read this in my reading like an Enneagram 3 video pretty recently. So if you want my full thoughts on this one, I'll link it in the cards and in the description for you. But I really liked this book, but do be warned, it is about a pandemic. So it might not be the best timing to read it, but I think that this book has a very hopeful tone to it. And I really liked the conclusion of it and how it made me think there is light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I think that it was a reminder that I personally needed in a time like this when we're going through a lot of life changes and the world is not what it used to be. The next request was for a terrifying thriller. So I tend to stay away from books that are super scary, but no Exit by Taylor Adams it definitely fits the bill for this one. I have never been so reactive to a thriller before. I read this book and I was literally wanting to vomit. I literally wanted to pass out. My vision was blacking because so many of the things that happened in this book truly disturbed me. So be warned of this one. It is very gory, very graphic. There are some scenes in here that if I think about too hard, I might pass out again. <laughs> so No Exit follows a woman who basically is going home for the holidays to visit her mother in the hospital. And she has to stop at a rest stop because of a snowstorm. And at this rest stop, she sees a child locked in a cage in someone's vehicle. So it's a very isolated setting. It's very fast paced, very gripping, and it will definitely terrify you. The next request was for enemies to to lovers and I am going to give you a YA recommendation as well as an adult recommendation. So starting off with the adult recommendation, Actor H. E. Brown by Talia Hibbert. I loved this book so much. This is the third book in the Brown Sisters trilogy and unfortunately I think the last. So I'm devastated that this series is over but this was my favorite in the entire series so I'm very very happy that it is out in the world and I just can't wait to read it again because it's just so much fun. It has a bed and breakfast sort of scenery and it has an enemies to lovers situation with Eve Brown and the owner of the bed and breakfast. And it's just so much fun. So definitely act to Eve Brown if you have not read it yet. The second recommendation that I want to give to y'all for enemies to lovers is a YA book. So I'm going to recommend Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. Now Tweet Cute is adorable in every sense of the word. It is about a grilled cheese Twitter war. What doesn't entice you about that? Basically the two main characters of this book, Pepper and Jack, isn't that so cute? Pepper Jack? Okay, anyways, they basically are going head to head in a Twitter war because they have rival family companies that maybe have stolen a grilled cheese recipe from one another. And there's a lot of layers to this one, but the enemies to lovers aspect is super, super cute. The next request is for I Hate Everyone But You, and I'm going to say A Touch of Darkness because this one, oh my gosh, it's a Hades and Persephone's retelling. And I read this for my Can We Trust book talk video you know, the drill cards, description, whatever, if you want to go find out my full thoughts. But A Touch of Darkness was fantastic. Five stars. I loved this because of the I hate everyone, but you trope in it. It's essentially a urban fantasy romance, which was the most enticing part to me. But then you add the I hate everyone, but you aspect and it is perfection. So if you are interested in that trope, you need to read that one. The next request was something that you love, but is hard to recommend. And I knew exactly what I had to say for this book. <laughs> I'm going to recommend this selection by Kira Cass. Now, hear me out on this one. I know it's garbage. I know it's not great. I know the writing could use work. I know the world building elements, absolute garbage. But am I reading that book for the world building? Absolutely not. I'm reading it for Prince Maxon, the love of my freaking life. I have reread that book series more times than I can count. It holds such a special place in my heart. And I feel like people either really love it or they really hate it. And the people that really love it acknowledge, you know, it's not the best series in the world, but I just owe so much of my love to reading for the selection series and it's so hard to recommend it, but I honestly encourage everyone who is even slightly interested in the series to give it a chance because Prince Maxon owns my entire heart. I love him so freaking much. So the selection series is a dystopian book where basically it's The Bachelor, but in an American monarchy system. 
I love this next request as well. It says audiobooks that are better than the book itself. So I'm going to be basic here and tell you Daisy Jones and the Six. I think that if you can listen to audiobooks, this one you should absolutely listen to because it just was a transformative experience. I sat in my room, stared at my wall all day, just listened to Daisy Jones and the Six and I was happy as could be. It was fantastic on audio. I also really enjoyed the audiobook to all the boys I've loved before. I don't think that I would have enjoyed it as much if I had physically read it. I think that the narrative just does such a wonderful job of capturing the essence of Lara Jean and oh, I loved the audiobook so much. I still need to listen to the third one but I just want to save it for a rainy day when I'm feeling sad and I want to be uplifted because they're just so cute. Okay they're so cute. The next recommendation request is for friends to lovers and like I said earlier in this video I'm not a huge fan of friends to lovers but it can be done right my friends. I'm gonna start off with a bang spoiler alert. I don't know if I would truly classify this as friends to lovers but I think that it counts because it has a really fun twist on that trope, which is why I think I liked it so gosh darn much. This is a romance where basically the main characters write fan fiction of one of the love interest show and it's really stinking cute. Please go read it. I scream about this book at least once a week. <laughs> I also want to recommend a YA book for this. I'm going to say Emmy and Oliver by Robin Benway and this one also has a fun twist on it because it follows a young girl and a young boy. Emmy, Oliver, okay, their names are the title of the book. And Emmy basically knew Oliver all of her life and then he basically disappeared because his dad kidnapped him. And now he's back in the town where he's originally from and Emmy wants to rekindle her friendship with Oliver, but Oliver's like, I don't remember you. We really weren't that close of friends. I left when I was really, really young. So they were friends originally, but now they have to kind of rebuild that friendship because of all the time that Oliver has been away. The next request was for YA fantasy romance and don't worry, I got you. So the first one that I'm going to recommend, just real quickly, let me get this out the way. Literally any single one of these, you're good to go. There is so much romance in these series and I'm not going to explain it all to you, but I love every single romance that Cassandra Clare has ever crafted. And what can I say? Okay, I'm basic, but I love it. The next book that I want to recommend for this trope is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. And this one was really, really cute. I thought the romance aspect was actually my favorite part of this book. Now, I know I mentioned just now why a fantasy romance. I got a lot of recommendations for fantasy, a lot. And a lot of people were asking me for where to start with fantasy, for urban fantasy, light fantasy. I got you. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about it. I'm not going to be repetitive though. I do have a video full of why fantasy recommendations, which again, cards description, go check it out. I'm not going to repeat any of the books that I said in that video specifically because I don't want to be redundant, but that video has a lot of really great recommendations. So if you have not watched it yet and you like YA fantasy, definitely go refer to that video. For beginners to fantasy, I want to say read Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman is my boy. I love him so much. His worlds are so rich and magical. And honestly, I just haven't read an author that really compares to him and you need to read his books. I say start out with Stardust though because it is very much a classic fairy tale. It's about a shooting star and a boy pining for a girl and going to rescue the star so that he can be with her. And it has so many classic fantasy tropes and it's so easy to read and just fall in love with. So definitely Stardust is a great recommendation for beginners to fantasy. I also got a request for underrated books, which I love because I love to talk about books that I don't get to talk about very often. So I'm going to recommend for this Lobozona. This is a werewolf urban fantasy book with a lot of Latinx culture in it. And it was really, really great. I highly recommend it. If again, you're looking for YA fantasy books, this has a boarding school trope, which I really, really loved and just really great characters. I also want to mention King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. This book was fantastic. I read it as an audiobook. I almost actually recommended this for the request of name an audiobook that is better than the actual book. King and the Dragonflies is an LGBTQIA plus middle grade. And it was just so so encapturing. Like this one really just took my heart and smashed it into a million pieces. And I feel like people don't talk about it enough. Next, I got a request for a book that is an emotional roller coaster. And boy, oh boy, do I have the book for you. 
Anxious people by Frederick Bachman. You guys knew this was coming up eventually. I couldn't go an entire recommendations video without forcing my agenda on you. Frederick Bachman is one of my favorite authors. He captures humanity so freaking well. And I think that if you're looking for an emotional roller coaster of a book, this is definitely the one to go to because I was literally laughing and crying within the same page, sometimes the same paragraph. I don't know how this man does it, but his writing is absolutely magnetic and I love it so much. So Anxious People is about a bank robbery gone wrong and now people at an apartment viewing are being held hostage by the bank robber. It's so good. It explores humanity in a way that I've just never read about before and this is actually like my favorite book of all time. So if you're gonna listen to any of these recommendations, please read this one. So this video is going to get very, very long if I keep going. So let me know if you guys would like a part two. Comment down below if so, and I will do that for you. I'm more than happy to oblige. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really, really appreciate you. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel down below. I post book related content twice a week. I also have my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, Amazon wishlist, all that good stuff linked down there as well in case you want to support me elsewhere. And until next time, Bye, all.